If you're wondering why you're finding it so difficult to find a compatible husband, then you need to watch this video as you could be making one of the five mistakes that I will be explaining today. Asalaamu As Alaikum and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Farhad Amin and I'm the author of the popular book Smart Single Muslimer and on this channel I provide Islamic solutions to the challenges Muslim women face. Inshallah, the advice that I will be sharing with you today are snippets from my book, Smart Single Muslima. Inshallah, let's begin. The first mistake that you may be guilty of making is that you are not doing istikhara. It's something that is really important that you do. And let's just have a look at the reasons why you may not be doing istikhara. When it comes to istikhara, one of the things that I've noticed is that women will do istikhara at the end rather than the beginning of the process of when they're looking for a spouse. And I think that's a big mistake. It's really important that the way that we view istikhara is that it's asking Allah for guidance. Allah is aware and knowledgeable of everything. Um, and when it comes to a person that you think is suitable for you, you really do need Allah's help to shine a light, to provide you guidance, to show you if there is something wrong. And therefore, istikhara is the sunnah method of doing, of asking Allah for that guidance. When you have a decision that you're not sure about, you ask Allah for help. And in my book, I go through the details of how to do istikhara. So this is the mistake that I'd really like to get you to think about that are you doing this that have you already made your mind up and then just as a side note you're doing istikhara like just going through the motions or are you genuinely and intentionally asking Allah to help you because that's what you really need to do and it's not enough to do istikhara just once that's a that's something that a lot of people do as well you should be doing istikhara before you even start considering someone or if you get a proposal. You should be doing istikhara once you're meeting his family, whilst you're discussing with him. And you should even do istikhara before the marriage day because you can never have enough guidance from Allah. So don't don't use the istikhara as a tool where you're, it's just cementing what you have already decided to do do it very genuinely very intentionally you know like with all du'as that we make to Allah and I have a whole chapter on on you know the power of du'a in your marriage journey in my book and so therefore you know don't make that mistake of um, taking istikhara lightly because alhamdulillah Allah has given us this beautiful tool that we should use in our lives and not just for marriage for any big decisions and so really, as Muslims, we should really hold on to it and utilise it in the best manner possible. The second mistake that you may be doing without even realising it is that you are idealising the idea of marriage. It's been turned into some kind of solution to all your problems. Are you guilty of idealising the idea of marriage? Because that is a mistake that I think so many of us have made. And so what do I mean by that? We can sometimes make marriage into something that it is not, that it will somehow solve all our problems once we get married, whether it's loneliness, um, you know, emotional um, attachments that we do not, we, we're yearning for, you know, even the physical attachment that we want. That, and yes, it, it does do that, but it's not the salute, it will not solve all your problems. It's not like a panacea for every problem that you have. It's just, it's, it's something that Allah has allowed us, Alhamdulillah, and blessed us with. Um, and it's that you get companionship, you receive love, you know, you then can have children. So there are many, alhamdulillah, many blessings relating to marriage, but it will not take care of every single issue that you have. And sometimes I think also we can then put that um, burden onto our husband as well, that expecting him to resolve 
all the issues we have and, and somehow everything's going to be perfect. So, and, and I do need to, we do need to consider where we get this idealized image of marriage. And one of the things that happens is that what we see on our, you know, our social media, on our friends' um, posts and videos, is we see the highlights of people's married life. You know, you see the people going out to dinner, you see the wedding, you see the, you know, the engagement party, all the really lovely, beautiful parts of it. And we can then think, well, yeah, when I get married, that's what's going to, what I'm going to have. I'm going to have all of those happy times. But we need to remember that people only post the highlights, the best bits. You don't see the hard work, the you know, the, the compromises that you have to make, the daily routines that people have once they get married. And they are so important to bear in mind as well. I think another culprit for creating this idealised image of marriage is um, the the media that we consume. So the music, um, the movies, the romantic novels. These also, you know, especially think of how celebrities want to market themselves and, and YouTube couples want to market themselves. It is this very, we are so happy, we are so in love. And it's very easy, if that is what you are consuming, then that is what will, like, the pieces that create the image of what a marriage is and what married life is like, they are those pieces that are building a picture in your mind. And so therefore the mistake we mustn't make is we mustn't do that. I, I would say don't follow, you know, YouTube couples, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, couples that are creating this unrealistic, unattainable um, concept of marriage. Don't follow them because it's going to make you unhappy when you get married. You will compare your marriage to to their marriages. But even when you're looking for a spouse, you're going to be comparing him to the the men that you're seeing so, and it's so hard to live up to unrealistic, you know, um, photoshopped images and, you know, people always, like I said, they put the highlights. The person you are looking for is imperfect. It, he will be imperfect, just like you are imperfect. You have flaws, he will have flaws. So, and your marriage will also have flaws. But Alhamdulillah, what you have is Islam, which is perfect, which will help you to overcome those challenges that you will face. So let's not look for, um, create this idealised image. You know, we know people do that to their wedding days, that they want to have the perfect wedding day and then they get really upset if the flowers or the venue or the food, or, you know, that is not what makes a marriage, will not make your marriage, inshallah, happy and a path to Jannah. It's the reliance on Allah, obeying your creator, you and your future husband together, working to become the best possible Muslims to attain Jannah together. Um, so yeah, let's not take those up, that idealised image of, ma of marriage. Let's the third mistake, and this is something that you may not have even realised, is that are you ready to be someone's wife? Now that might seem like an odd question, but I wonder how much you have really thought about that. It's very important to know where you are getting your definitions of what it means to be a wife. And because when we're living in the West, we are given, um, you know, mixed messages, what it means to be a wife. So from a liberal, progressive point of view, it, it would be some, you decide what you want to do. It's based on your feelings, what makes you happy, what you choose. Um, there are no strict definitions. And even though you are part of a marriage, it really whether you choose to stay at home, take care of the kids, work, these are all up to you. It's Everything is open to discussion. Whereas in Islam, uh, through the Quran and Sunnah, we have got clear definitions and roles and responsibilities and rewards that Allah tells us about. So if you're getting, you know, you need to do that research on what does it mean to be a wife, what, um, what is the family structure in Islam, you know, that we are shepherds, you know, a husband is the protector and provider, the wife takes care of the home, takes care of the housework, the chores, the children, you know, there's room for discussion on, you know, whether you choose to have a cleaner or not, or, you know, 
there were there is a, a certain amount of flexibility within that but it, with we cannot deny that Allah has given us a role as a wife and the question is is that something you are prepared to do but before you know whether you can do that you need to make sure you've gained knowledge about what it means to be someone's wife the fourth mistake is something that I see very often but women don't even realize that they're doing it and it's putting in very little effort to the whole idea of looking for a spouse. This is actually a slightly funny mistake that uh, many women make. And this is um, the idea of putting effort into looking for a husband. It seems to have become very um, un-PC and very uncool to actively look for a husband. I'm not saying that you broadcast this on all your social media platforms. However, there is this idea that somehow, um, just by chance or by magic, or um, you, you'll bump into your husband, your future husband, that he will, you know, arrive th- at work or through study or through. But really, you will not have to put much effort into it. And if you are putting effort in and you let people know that I'm looking and can you help me, can you look for me, somehow that makes you desperate. Now, that's not true at all. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Most of the people I know that got married was because they asked people, do you know someone? Uh, could you help me? You know, do you have any um, any suitable people that you would know of? Because what you need to realise, and this is something I go into detail about in my in the first chapter of my book, which is called, Is Marriage Going Out of Fashion? That the world has changed now. Why does society doesn't do that? Non-Muslims, they just date and they go out and they go on Tinder dates and one night stands. But Alhamdulillah, we still get married. And so you have to put in the effort. You have to ask people. You have to think, where is it that I will find a person that is compatible with me? And if you're not going to put in that time and effort, you could end up not getting married for a very long time. Um, And you must get away from this idea that thinking it's desperate to tell people that you want to get married. Um, So really think about, and again, I have a whole chapter on this, that what practically can you do to find a husband in the 21st century? Um, Because there are many options out there. The question is, are you willing to put that effort in? Because we we put effort into our education, into our studies, into our work, into progressing in our careers. But do we put the same amount of energy into finding a spouse? Because if you're not, then that's a mistake you're making. And that could be one reason why you are not married at the moment. The final and fifth mistake is that we have become very used to expecting perfection and this can really cause major problems for when you are looking for a compatible spouse. The final mistake is really quite unusual. It's that we look for perfection and... I call, think I'm calling it unusual because we are not perfect ourselves. But when it comes to the person that we're looking for, we have a list of what we want, a criteria. And having standards is a good thing. You should have standards. And you should have a list of things that are essential. And then you should have a list of things that you could co- willing, you're willing to compromise on. But when you start looking for perfection, then you're going to be very disappointed. So my advice to you is that you must, when you're making a list of what you want from a future husband, one, um, Islam has to be involved in that discussion. There has to be the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said where, and I'm paraphrasing, that um, there were reasons why, you know, you get married. Uh, One is deen, you know, um, Islam. One could be the family. Another could be um, looks and another could be um, wealth. Now, they're all valid reasons, but then the Prophet ﷺ said that deen is the most important. If someone doesn't care about Islam, then why are they going to care about taking care of you, 
you know, keeping their promises, you know, staying faithful, being a provider, being a protector, you know, helping you to get to Jannah together. These, that's what you want from a spouse. You mustn't forget that. And so then there are some things, whether it's the height, the nationality, the language, the occupation, the paycheck, these are things that are, you know, they're, they're there, but they are not the most important things. And what you need to realize is the more, the longer your list and that quest for perfection, it becomes longer and longer. And you're going to be left looking for this um, person who, who doesn't exist. If you would like more tips about marriage and being single and how to find a spouse, then you will, I think you'll really like my video about um, why... Muslim women are finding it difficult to get married. That is in, um, I'll put the link up there. You can you can watch that. And you can, like I said as well, all the tips that I gave you today are from my book. It's available from Amazon, inshallah. Check it out. I think you'll find it really useful. And I will see you in the next video. Asalaamu Alaikum. Take care.